Hey, this is Digital by Computing. We're gonna go through the basic steps on how to set up a basic home network. Now, if you're watching this, you may already have some form of a basic home network set up at home. But I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to make it better, how to manage it better, how to give it more security, flexibility, those sort of things, so that when you get a new device, it's very easy to add it into your home network. So chances are you're on the internet or you've heard of the internet. I hope you've heard of the internet. Uh, well, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you've heard of it because that's how you're watching it on the internet. Uh, you've got a modem, you've got a router. Perhaps you've got a modem router that is combined. Some sort of device that is accessing the internet, that lets you access the internet. You could have a phone line plugged in, you could have like a copper sort of cable running in, you know, like a fiber cable or something running into a modem. And then that in turn, gives you access to a network uh, in your home, okay? Your router could be wireless, right? So a lot of your devices, if, you, if you've got things like, um, you know, tablets and, and phones, an iPhone or, or iPads or an Android phone, um, chances are they're on the wireless and they could be communicating with your wireless network at home. So first thing is you, you probably have got a modem router somewhere on your network something's plugging into it, and you may even have ports on the back, like ethernet ports on the back to be able to run physically into computers, okay? Now generally what you'll find is running physical cables to all of your devices is generally going to be better. You're gonna make sure that there's no dropouts, that if your wireless doesn't get, you know, doesn't drop out, you don't lose all connection. Uh, you've also gotta realize that your wireless runs on certain frequency bands, so people around you, maybe your neighbor, maybe things like a microwave, those sort of things can sometimes interrupt the frequency and can cause things to go slower or, or you know, and actually adjust your, um, your speed of your wireless at times. Look, I'm not saying that does happen very often, but it can happen. So always physically running cables is generally a better thing, but let's forget about that for the time being. So you've got your modem router and that is, you know, let's say, let's say it's a wireless device. If it's not a wireless device, Maybe look at a wireless router, uh, maybe look at a router modem plugged into a wireless device somewhere. So you can have like a wireless router on your network perhaps. And then this wireless router is dishing out the wireless signal out to your entire home, right? You've probably got something similar. You've got your, your name and then you, you check it, you've got it listed in your, in your drop downs so when you're trying to connect to the wireless. You put in your password and Bob's your uncle, you can go and connect to the internet but realizing that that's obviously going through your router, through your modem out onto the internet to get you access. It's not going directly out to the internet, it goes via this sort of little channel, right? On your network, you could have things, as I mentioned before, like your iPhone, a phone, a tablet. You could have something like an Apple TV, like a media sort of system, connected wirelessly to your wireless router, right? Um, gaming consoles, a lot of people don't have uh, don't think that their gaming consoles probably have got some sort of network connectivity, right? Like the, the, the Nintendo, the Xbox, the, um, the PlayStation have all got network connectivity. Wireless, and a lot of them have got the network point, so you can actually physically run a cable into them as well. So you can get internet access on your game console. So you can actually go and play online with your setup at home. As long as you've got a wireless something in your, in your home presenting you know, some sort of wireless internet, you can connect your game devices, your game consoles to that as well. Download updates for your games, all those sort of things. Download content. You've also probably got TVs. A lot of TVs nowadays, a lot of the smart TVs have got built-in wireless cards in them. You know, a lot of them have got the network point on the back. Why don't you run your TV into your home network? That is a very good thing that you could try. Um, your TV may have all these features that you don't actually know about. So running your TV into the network could open up all these, you know, all these additional apps. You could have apps on there. You could be connecting to a, um, a media server if you've got something like Plex or XBMC running, which are media servers that you can have running at home. You can maybe stream your, your content, your, your movies and your DVDs and your TV shows that you have on your computer. You could be streaming those, streaming those to your TV quite easily by setting it up on the network perhaps. All right. So if we're talking about cabled stuff here again, so we've discussed wireless and all your devices can be connected to your computer uh, and your network and everything wirelessly, which is great. 
You can also all do it via cables, right? So there's a lot of different things that you can do. If you're gonna be running cables throughout everything, you may wanna get what's called a switch, which is essentially, you may have seen it, like you may actually have a router with some network points on the back. A switch is just a big brother of that. It could be an eight port switch. You have eight ports where you can run into it. So what you do is you run your TV into one port, you run your Apple TV into another port, you run your computer into another port, and then maybe your wireless router into another port. Because there could be instances where you have some devices out on your network, if we're talking about game consoles, a television, something like that, that perhaps doesn't have a wireless card, but you still want it to get internet access, you may need to run it physically with a cable, with like a network cable, right? So think, think about that, you may need to invest in getting some different network cables, some additional, they're called Cat5 or Cat6 cables, um, or Cat6 of the newer technology, so go for a Cat6 cable, which are generally, the, they're the uh, blue cables, they do come in other colors, but generally they are blue, and you can run those, all your devices into switches, and then get yourself access to the internet and your home network there. Other things to think about is if you've got a weak wireless signal in your home, it could be the fact that you need a second wireless um, router in your home. So if you've got, say for example, a double story home in, in this case, you've got, a, you've got your wireless router is upstairs in your, in your study or in your, in your master bedroom. That's where you've got your, your wireless router set up. You go downstairs or you go into your backyard and you may not actually be able to receive the internet. Oh, I can't access the wireless. You could go out with your iPad and you can't surf the internet. Or you've got a laptop, you go out and you can't surf the internet. Look at perhaps getting a second wireless device. You can actually have many, well you can have a, a lot of different wireless routers all talking to each other. So you can have your wireless router upstairs, you can have a wireless router downstairs, which is talking to that wireless router upstairs, and then the wireless router downstairs is broadcasting a network to all of your downstairs, including perhaps parts of your backyard. So you can easily access your network from anywhere you want, as long as you've got enough signal strength, okay? Things you can think about as well is when you're, if you're ever looking at designing a home, if you're building a home, look at perhaps running the cables behind your walls, all right? As I mentioned earlier, Running with cables is more is a more sure bet that things aren't going to go wrong. Things generally going to work better. You don't have to go in and find your wireless and put in a password. Everything will generally work a little bit better if you've got wireless, uh, if you've got wired cables, if you've got physical cables. So look at maybe running cables throughout your whole house to to a central location, you know, to a central switch or something like that. And look, that's a basic summary of of a basic network setup at home. Okay, you've got your wireless router or your wired router and that's all that all got all your devices plugged into that in some way or another or another it could be completely wireless or you could be running cables into it you could have a, se a separate switch right with some ports which is running into this router as well and then all your devices plug into that switch to be able to broadcast your network okay so there are very various uh, technologies available for you to be able to do this you can get a lot more technical, which we're not going to go through today, but you can assign, there's, there's these things called IP addresses, which each device will have. You can go and mimic that and change that and, and adjust what your IP addresses are and things like that as well. But look, I hope, I hope this was helpful, um, giving you just a brief overview of setting up a basic network at home. We're not going to go over the steps on how to physically do it, but I'm hoping that I've given you enough information to at least know what sort of stuff you need, um, what devices in your house could be already wireless, could be already on, the, on potentially have access to some sort of internet or network, um, and that way you could maybe get your whole house connected to the internet in some way or another. So, look, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Digital Byte Computing for a whole bunch of more videos.